Proteasome inhibitors are one of the most important classes of drugs in treatment of multiple myeloma. Nowadays, we have three clinically approved drugs. It's bortezomib and carflizomib that are used intravenously, and the first oral proteasome inhibitor, ixazomib. To explain the mechanism of proteasome inhibitors, we have to know how protein synthesis occurs. The concept is that initially ribosomes produce proteins. And then to modify proteins to make them functionally capable, they have to undergo post-translational modifications in endoplasmic reticulum. In case of plasma cells, they produce immunoglobulins in very high quantity. And then plasma cells secrete that huge amount of immunoglobulins into the blood that cause specific symptoms of multiple myeloma. But in a process of proteins production in endoplasmic reticulum, some proteins are produced broken. These proteins are called unfolded proteins, and because such proteins do not have any functional significance, they should be quickly utilized. And proteins degradation is provided by 26S proteasome complex. We have to know that 26S proteasome complex is composed of two 90S subunits and one 20S subunit. And the activity of proteasome is controlled by so-called ubiquitin proteasome system. Proteasomes degrade proteins into small peptides that can be easily eliminated by the cell. The key concept here is that the level of upfolded proteins inside the endoplasmic reticulum is determined by the protein's production and protein's degradation. As we said, for protein's production are responsible ribosomes and endoplasmic reticulum. And protein's degradation is provided by the proteasome complex that is controlled by so-called ubiquitin proteasome system. As we know, in multiple myeloma, malignant plasma cells produce huge amount of clonal immunoglobulins. And to maintain normal proteins level inside the endoplasmic reticulum, massive proteins production by ribosomes and endoplasmic reticulum has to be accompanied by rapid utilization of upfolded proteins by proteasomes. So to produce massive amount of immunoglobulins, Malignant plasma cells require extremely high activity of proteasomes. And in multiple myeloma, it's provided by the upregulation of ubiquitin proteasome system. The activity of ubiquitin proteasome system in malignant plasma cells is extremely low. So, low activity of ubiquitin proteasome system significantly increases the activity of proteasome complex, thereby providing rapid utilization of upfolded proteins and by this it prevents proteins overload in endoplasmic reticulum. So, because malignant plasma cells have inhibited ubiquitin proteasome system, they are able to produce huge amount of proteins without excessive accumulation of unfolded proteins in endoplasmic reticulum. And this specific feature of malignant plasma cells makes them really dangerous, because they can produce huge amount of immunoglobulins that cause severe clinical symptoms but we can use their strengths against them. Currently, we have medication that inhibits proteasome function. We have a class of drugs called proteasome inhibitors. Nowadays, most commonly we use bortezomib. Bortezomib blocks 20S subunit in proteasomes, and by this bortezomib inhibits proteasome activity. Thereby, degradation of unfolded proteins decrease, but their production remains the same. So with time they begin to progressively accumulate inside the endoplasmic reticulum. And at some point the amount of unfolded proteins become so high that it causes endoplasmic reticulum stress. And the specific feature of endoplasmic reticulum stress is that it activates caspases. And activation of caspases is a final step of intrinsic apoptotic pathway that results in cell or death. Recall that the central event in apoptotic intrinsic pathway is mitochondrial alpha membrane permeabilization or rupture of the outer mitochondrial membrane. Because with disruption or with extreme increase in permeability of the mitochondrial outer membrane, the content in the mitochondrial intramembrane space will be released into the cytosol, including cytochrome C. Once cytochrome C is released into the cytosol, it initiates a caspase cascade. Cytochrome C binds to apoptotic protease activating factor 1, 
This complex together with ATP molecule binds to procaspase 9. This results in formation of a massive protein complex called a peptosome. In a peptosome, inactive procaspase 9 is converted to its active form, caspase 9. Caspase 9, called initiator caspase, because it activates downstream caspases, is caspase 3, 6 and 7. They called execution caspases because they have proteolytic activity. They cleave intracellular proteins and by this they cause severe structural damage to them. They affect four major categories of intracellular proteins, its mediators and regulators of apoptosis, structural cellular proteins, cellular DNA repair proteins, and cell cycle related proteins. And we see that all these proteins are of vital importance for the cell, and structural damage to them inevitably leads to a cellular death. Currently, we know that bortezomib induced endoplasmic reticulum stress activates caspase 9 and also directly activates caspase 3. And by this, it basically induces the final stage of intrinsic apoptotic pathway that results in cellular death by apoptosis. So, bortezomib, by inhibition of proteasomes, decreases the amount of malignant plasma cells in the bone marrow, and the lower is the amount of malignant plasma cells in the bone marrow, the less severe become clinical symptoms. So, proteasomal inhibitors greatly improve treatment efficiency and the prognosis in patients with multiple myeloma. If you like content, please press like and subscribe button. All the best!